morning to everybody online. He's the God of the city. Yeah. And God is calling the body of Christ to prayer, to intercession, and to the prophetic. And we are beginning to see pockets of people in um, the parks singing, decreeing, mm -hmm. declaring, mm -hmm. worshipping our God beyond the walls of the church. This is amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And it takes more than prayer to see a breakthrough. But without prayer, we will see nothing. I'm just going to open the door. When I say it takes more than prayer, we need to display the supernatural ways of God. There is a person on, Charles Peterson. Hello, from Norway. Wow. Welcome online, Charles. It is so wonderful to see you. And welcome to Steve and Chris from uh, Chester in the United Kingdom. This is wonderful to have the nations come online and be able to fellowship together. You are so welcome. I think it was Charles that asked me, are my online meetings for ladies only? And I said, no, absolutely not. So, so welcome, Charles. And we are speaking about the fact that on an earthly backdrop, it looks pretty bleak that we're seeing one world order and one world monetary system and interfaith. But in the spirit and on the kingdom of God, the ecclesia, the called out ones, we can see that we are in an amazing, amazing season where people are beginning to to demonstrate the love of God, the fullness of God, the, the, uh, the supernatural of God in the highways and the byways, in the parks, on uh, uh, wherever, to the whosoever. And so d during this pandemic and this lockdown, the church certainly never got smaller. If anything, the church has expanded and got bigger. And, and Jesus is prevailing even though the word says to us there will be darkness on the earth and deep darkness on the people yet the light of the lord god's light will be seen on the earth good day mary finn from dublin lovely to have you on board so we are as we gather today the ecclesia the called out ones the ones from the nations that are loving God and trusting God. Um, and so we want to see cities, whole cities, come to Jesus. We want to see strongholds coming down. And we're going to see strongholds coming down with various types of prayers, intercessions and supplications. We are seeing an end time church that we remember it being prophesied that in one decade, the, the shape of the church will change so radically it will be unrecognizable. And all that time, we changed music, we changed seating, we did all of this. And now, it's not about that at all. It's about coming back. Well, first of all, we see we have church online. We have church in various forms. The church is changing. That is not about people sitting in rows and somebody with a microphone. 
<coughs> that the children of God, those that have know the name of the Lord, have called upon his name and are saved, are being released into their gift and calling. Whether it's in the marketplace, whether it's in the church, as in a building, whether it's online, whether it's in your home, the church is changing so radically that it's not just about the church on the street corner. It's about the tabernacle of God, which is inside of us. And yesterday we started to look a little bit about grace and faith. For it's by grace that we've been saved, through faith in Jesus, and not by our own works. And every time there is a swell, a ground swell in the spirit, the wave stops because men and women try and contain it, and they bring structure to it. And once you try and contain it, even as Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples said to him, Oh, look, there's a connection between heaven and earth. And these, these that have gone before, yeah, they're standing with us. Let's create booths. Let's contain this. Let's tabernacle with heaven. And you know, Jesus... He said, sometimes you'll worship on this mountain and other times you'll worship in the temple. And what he was saying is this that is happening cannot be contained by hands. And the Holy Spirit and the presence of heaven comes sometimes without announcements. Think of Jacob in Genesis, lying with his head on a rock or a stone. In his worst condition, having stolen his brother's birthright, having worked for Laban, on and on and on. What you sow, you reap. As he was a trickster, he was tricked by Laban, even got the wrong wife first. And then he decides, I'm going back to sort out my covenant. I'm going back. I'm going to put this right. And while he is lying there, even though he's prepared his own gift of something like 500 livestock to give to his brother, things don't change because you've made an outward plan. Things change because there's a move in the spirit. And when he woke up, he said, surely God is in this place and I didn't know it. God never leaves. There is a scripture that says he brings treasures out of darkness. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He is everywhere. The love of God will not fail on the believer or the unbeliever. That's the love of God. But the benefits of salvation is a different story. We have the nature of Christ, the mind of Christ. We are created in his image, not in his outward image, in the spirit. For you cannot worship God, for God without being Worshipping in the spirit, for God is spirit, and we worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when Jacob came to truth in his inner being, everything changed. Everything changed. And so we see a groundswell of a heavenly encounter upon us in the earth we have been shaken everything has been shaken believer and unbeliever i will shake all that can be shaken so that what cannot be shaken will remain he is unshakable he is unshakable and he holds all things together 
and the plan that he has for your life cannot fail. He watches over his word to perform it. And so know that through grace and faith, not faith um, towards God, but faith from God, he puts his faith on us and in us. A measure of faith for salvation, a measure of faith to be able to walk this life, a gift of supernatural faith to be able to perform mighty deeds. And by grace, we walk in the wonders of our God. And yesterday we looked at, if you press olives, you'll get oil. If you press grapes, you'll get wine. If you press this flesh, the result is you will start to display the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, self-control, of, of which there is no law. <laughs> and so we need to know that we are we know each other by our fruits you can see god the 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 the, the work of god on people's lives excuse me i'm just grabbing a book and we are pressing against this backdrop that's very dark towards a place not only of reformation of what we think and how we think and how we apply it but to a place of revival we can see revival culture beginning as the children of god cry out oh, re revive us oh god revive us you see the children of god saying see if there be any ways in me that need to change oh god shine your light in me for I call out where I have gone asleep. And so we have excitement as we come into a new space in the spirit and a new outworking. And when you see revival, you see salvation. And when you see salvation, you see um, revival come to families. And when you see families you see communities change and we've had many revivals in the past and then you're from families we see revi revival culture come to communities and we begin to see um, fellowship beginning to happen across the earth fellowship in houses community centers, uh, on the train, in coffee shops. That's why that prophecy was. And the shape of the church will change so radically that it will be unrecognizable. So we have been called to overcome. And as Jacob was, uh, he named that place Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. Well, for somebody that doesn't understand, they would have said, well, was there a church there? No, no, no. The meeting point between heaven and earth is he called it Bethel. This is the house of God. And there's a promise to overcome, uh, overcomers, as we are part of that building of God in our lives. There's promises. And so we are drawn to, to a gathering that is not made by hands. Not made by hands. A gathering. And I'm so excited that when people ask, so what church do you belong to? Look, I'm still pastoring a church. Don't get me wrong at this moment. But we're in lockdown. But I want us to get to that place when they say, what church do you belong to? And I can say the Church of Cape Town, South Africa. Not the Presbyterian or the Anglican or the this or the that. The Church of Jesus Christ in Cape Town, South Africa. Eh? So we are shifting into a new day. Ephesians 3 verse 14 says, For this reason I bow, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and in earth uh, is named, that we 
should grant that he should grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in you in your hearts through faith through faith So God has given us, is giving us fresh impartation. Do you receive that? We are called to awaken the gift and calling inside of us. 2020, which is quickly coming to an end, is the time of declaration, decree and even prophecy and rejoicing. God in you is the hope of glory. Colossians says in uh, chapter 1 verse 27, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have been called with a purpose. You have a vision. In the time of shaking, one feels that we don't know where the vision is. We suddenly want to become um, paralyzed and say, what if the, is the point if the, the end draws nigh? Maybe I should just fix up myself. <laughs> no. We need to awaken into the shift of God and the vision of God and the calling of God. And we need to look after the shaking, the tsunami, that we strengthen what remains and we reach into the new. We are not going back to same old, same old. The shift of God will change you from those that don't have a voice to those that have a voice. Through much trials and preparation and the pain of your past is the preparation of your future. If there's anybody online today that can say to me, I've had no pain. You must have the wrong God. I'm just sailing through life. Please let me know. <laughs> no. There has been pressings, there has been shakings, there has been trials and there has been tribulations. The word of God says we will go through the water, but we won't drown. We will go through the fire, but we won't be burnt. Now is the time, says Cheryl. Amen. Cheryl, you've entered into your new day. And even the, the bleating in the background or the squawking of the frogs in the background is just a residual and is going to move completely out of the way. And you are going to find such freshness in your lungs and such freshness on your life that 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 you came out of will be so far removed from what you are stepping into that there will be no resemblance and nothing to go back to. And the Lord says, Count it all joy, my daughter, for you have fought a good fight, a good fight, and great is your reward. And you will see my grace, my power, and my mercy. I will restore what the locust and the canker worm have eaten, and I will repay. I'm not going to rebuild it for what it was. I make all things new, says the Lord. So thank you, Father, for that word for Cheryl Harris. And I thank you, Father, that it will not return void, but will accomplish what you've declared over her this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We are called as the children of God to be those that reveal the purposes of God by 
God's spiritual climate. And we have entered into an atmosphere where we are no longer silent. We might have a mask on because of coronavirus, but there is an awakening on the inside. Open your mouth, says the Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid about what to say. For when you open your mouth, I will fill it with a good report. A good report. Even as darkness covers the earth and deep darkness the people, our job, the children of God, are called to arise and shine. We must become what we have been called to be. We must become what we have been called to be. Salt and light. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. It is not a whimsical, flimsy, oh, maybe I will do something for Jesus. It is an event. The awakening of your call is an event. The unwrapping of who you are is an event. Father is busy putting a mature anointing on you. Where the word says by now you should be mature and yet you are still babes. In this shutting of the door and this shaking, a new level of maturity has come to you as the sons and daughters of God. And there is no, um, I'll do this and I'll do that because you can't. You need to you are come to a place where you are saying, if it be the Lord's will, None of us are stretching to go back to what we knew. We are stretching to go into the season that is loaded with end time anointing where the word says he, the Lord himself will pour out his spirit on all flesh. I repeat this. The Old Testament was getting to know the Father. The New Testament was getting to know, the, uh, getting to know Jesus. And in the last days, he said that we are in those last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Sasha Parker, for you, the Lord says, I have already totally rebuilt your life, my daughter. And you have found aspects of yourself that you didn't even know were there. And there is a new a, a place of expectation in your heart. And dreams of old have been stirred up. And where two agree on anything, it shall be done. And Father says, you've come into a season of such incredible agreement for the things of God and the things of the Spirit. And the Lord says, I move you from 30 to 60 to a hundredfold increase, daughter. Watch and see what I will do. And your children will suffer no harm. They will flourish in every way, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The words that the Lord has spoken are powerful. What he has spoken over your life is powerful. What he has spoken over your life is expansive. What has he has spoken over your life is loaded with completion and with uh, accomplishment and with enlargement, God never creates a thing and leaves it half done. God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. And the good work that he has started in you, he's going to complete it. At the grand age of, well, I can't remember the age, but I was 11 when I came to know the Lord, 24 when I came back to the Lord and um, had three children. And when we went into ministry, when we were called into full-time ministry, now we weren't called by people, we were called by God. And we launched out into a little township nearby and 500 
between 300 and 100 and 500 people came every day for a week to a crusade. But when the crusade was over, we were about seven people called by God. And then God watched over the gift and the calling over myself and my, my husband. And we plowed and took out old foundations and prophesied over people and the town and grew the ministry. And it just went on and on and on. On and on. There were days that I would stand in worship with tears running down my face going, God, this can only be you. This can only be you. For in our own strength, we are nothing. If you have to think to yourself, what do you have to attract a, a people and to build the kingdom of God? Some can sing. Some can dance. Some can share stories. Jesus shared all those parables. Some are theologians and can unpack. Some are counselors. Some are workers of miracles. None of these things come from ourselves. They all come from God. It's his good pleasure to work with us and through us. Ministry is never to be despised. It says in the word of God, it is a good thing to desire a place as a leader in the house of God. It is a good thing. As it is a good thing to get a wife, the word says. <laughs> we always tease the couples that we marry and we say, you found a good thing. <laughs> And it's better for a man to live on the roof with a, than in a house with a dripping wife at a dripping tap. The Bible is like shoo, sharper than a sword. Shoo. Lady, stop dripping. You're giving your husband permission to go live on the roof. And that sounds really peculiar in our culture and setting. That the roof was a place where they went up to, to uh, for recreation and some even for prayer. It'd be better for him to separate himself and go to the place, the face place of God, because that's where change comes. That's where change comes. All change comes through God and His grace. And His grace. And so then after uh, 43 years of marriage and 35 years of ministry at this particular ministry, my husband went to be with Jesus. But the journey is not over. Here I am on the call that he and I receive from the Lord together. You never have to fear that God is going to abandon what he put in your hand. You never have to fear. We are not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Out of the treasure chest, we're going to take old and new. We're going to have the spirit and the word. They say with this, with the word without the spirit, you will dry up and the spirit without the word, you'll blow up. <laughs> and so we, we are not, we are not condemning church. We are stretching into the shape of a new era. When we came into 2020, we came into a new decade. And we came into a new era and the church is changing the way it looks and the way it manifests. But the message has not changed. Jesus Christ is good news for troubled times. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. 
This is just the end of an era and the beginning of a new era. How you lay the foundation in the beginning is important. And there's only one foundation, Jesus Christ. And that's why he said to his apostles, uh, check how you, what you lay on that foundation. It's not Jesus plus. It's not Jesus plus. As if the blood was not sufficient. The blood, the, the power of... In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. In all wisdom. James 1.21 Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness hmm, the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Jesus is the foundation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Casting off all those stuff that hold you back, we determined to become the dwelling place of, uh, of God. For it says in Colossians, as we have read, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If I think of the life of John G. Lake, and he came as a kingdom man, preaching justification and sanctification. And then he started moving in a healing anointing, where cancer was healed, and even our external cancer's growth fell off. And... And he became the dwelling place of God. He housed a gifting. He, um, he housed the anointing. He made room for the presence of God. Let us not be so filled with pride and arrogance and our own ideas disqualifying some and qualifying others. Let us make room to be able to house the Christ, Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. And so John G. Lake, in pushing out all that would hinder established 600 churches in South Africa, 600 churches. We need the nourishment of God's word. We need the presence of God. We need to know that we have the presence of God physically, spiritually and emotionally. You will see a cataclysmic change in your life and moving forward as you move away from God's visitation to allowing God to have habitation in every area of your life. You are the extraordinary and ordinary people that God wants to use. I want to be assured that if I go to heaven before Jesus returns, that I have been responsible and privileged to raise as many, many, many 
as many as possible that are not only called by God and saved by the blood of Jesus, but a company that will go. For the commission in Matthew 28 has not changed, that we are to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, that we are to lay hands on the sick, we are to cast out demons, we are to raise the dead, and we are to disciple nations. That is where we are now, at the discipling of nations. I haven't created an online ministry because I'm bored. I have created an online ministry to reach the nations as the nudge of God was very firm. As the doors of the church began to close, he said, get online now. And we together that day in and day out are fellowshipping online like this. You are part of pulling in a net of discipling nations. Welcome on board the ministry, the gifting and the calling that God has given you. You are not my disciples. You are God's disciples. You are God's children. We are God's family. And together, 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 we form the household of God. We are not competing. We are not comparing ourselves amongst ourselves. We are standing under the scepter of our God. As Jeremiah said, Here am I, Lord, send ye me. Some of you were sent. Some of you began. And someone or some circumstance has trampled your dream underfoot. I want you to arise again. For the Lord has not left you. The Lord has not um, backed off. He is watching over your call. No. You are not called to be in a rocking chair and you play it down and say, I've just been called to sit and pray in a corner now. Until he says the day is over, I want you to know that your God and your Father has called you, has called you to continue to be what he has called you to be. Rise up, children of God. When we come before the Father in the end, may he say, where are those? Well done for those that you have brought in to my house. My house, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. We have been fellowshipping together for probably over 200 messages now, every day. And we have been on a step-by-step -step Holy Spirit journey. And I say to you, under the directive of Holy Spirit, it's time for you to stand up to disciple nations. No, you don't need to take an aeroplane. Pray for them. Minister to them. Reach out to them. Give them the gospel. Walk the streets of the nation you are in. 
pray for your city. He is the God of the city. He is the God of the nation. There is much still to do, but we are in the time frame of nations becoming sheep nations. Nations coming back to God. What a exciting journey. What an exciting invitation to help disciple nations for our God. Father, we just thank you. There's nothing about your call that is stagnant and old and boring and insignificant. Everything about who you are and what you call us to is loaded with opportunity and grace and anointing. I thank you that we are Bethel, the house of God, and surely you are in our midst. And you have been stretching us and shaking us to enlarge our capacity. I thank you for the mature anointing with the right backdrop and the right season. We have the mature anointing in the season of the discipling of nations. We thank you that Jesus is the greatest discipler. The blood is, the, is powerful. And even as nations shake, even as cities have collapsed, all kinds of atrocities, we thank you for your hand that steadies what cannot be shaken. We thank you for faith. We thank you for grace. We thank you for Jesus, the hope of glory. Bless us this day, O oh God. Ignite your fire inside of us, passion, revelation, anointing, Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, show us, comfort us and teach us that we will be on the front foot and not lag behind. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are our rear guard. You cover our back and you keep us, keep us relevant and resolute in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless each and every one of you that stayed the course of <laughs> nearly an hour. And uh, I will see you tomorrow morning, which is Friday uh, at 10 a.m. Have an awesome day. Keep being lovers of God and lovers of one another. I will see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. God bless you.